Welcome to part two of uh, the, this video uh, on um, assembling, building my system of electronic stop labelling for your Hauptwerk virtual pipe organ. In the first part we discussed the components that are included in the core component kit. In this part we will uh, assemble one of the PCBs and test it and as part of that you will learn uh, some of the details of some of the additional components which are not part of the core kit which you can either source for yourself or you can obtain some of them from me. It may incidentally be quicker for you to source them yourself because sometimes I'm not always able to keep a stock. Right, let's look at the PCB. This is PCB, it's a two layer PCB. Uh, every component that is required on here is carefully labelled and the construction manual tells you precisely how to do what I'm going to show you now. Now, you'll see when you look at your PCBs, you'll see that they've got a number of um, uh, outlines here called footprints uh, for um, connect, connector, connector blocks um, that sit on the PCB. Uh, and you'll also see others here um, that are for larger connectors. Now what you have to do is look at the PCB and identify which side, as it says here, which side is the OLED side and on the other side which side is the connector side. Now this connector side is so called because it's got all the details of these connections here and the OLED side so called is because this is the side on which the labelling components are mounted. The labels are OLEDs, which stands for Organic Light Emitting Diode. That's the principle on which our labels work. They're not the same as LCDs. They're better than LCDs uh, because they are clearer, because they are, they are light emitting as opposed to liquid crystal devices, which are light transmitting. Right. What we have to do is to source... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 uh, sockets on here to hold our OLEDs. 12 on the central PCB and 11 on the inner and the outer. Because if that PCB was like that, on the one side here we have, say, the inner PCB and then on the other side, say here, we have the outer. You'll see that as we go on. Now, you need these connectors. Uh, I'm going to pick a connector out here and show you it. This is the connector that you need. It's fully described in the construction manual. It's called a um, 2 times 7 way dill, right? Because the sockets are, there's 7 in a row, in two rows of seven, two times seven. So altogether they're 14 way, right? But the arrangement is two times seven dill. Dill, D-I-L, stands for dual in line. And they are PCB mounting. So what you do is check that you're looking at the OLED side and then you put the first, the first connector into the holes that are there on there like that and the, the legs of the device PCB socket stick through the holes and that's where you solder. Now in order to solder them you need a soldering iron with a very fine conical tip uh, and you need 6040 solder. Um, you can use lead free solder if you wish but what is also important is the size of the solder core. It must be 0.7 millimeters because these are quite fine to solder. And you need to solder 14 little legs onto the point. And you must make sure that the, that the socket, when it's connected, that it's straight and that it's upright and that you've soldered every leg to its connection point uh, in the in the hole in the PCB and you have that job to do 12 times 
on the central board. But believe me, when you've done a couple of them, you'll feel quite comfortable doing it as long as you use a well illuminated place and a really fine conical soldering iron bit. Right, so you do that, you assemble that, and then when you've done that on one side, you then turn the board over and you pay attention to the other side. And we look at these here. Now these are a different kind of socket that we have here. This is called a pin header socket, a boxed pin header. Boxed because it's surrounded by a plastic box. Pin headers because they've, it's got pins in there. And this one is 40 ways, but it's in two rows of 20. So this is called a 2 times 20 box pin header dill socket. Okay? And this goes on the other side. It says connector side. This goes on the other side for the connector. And when you look at the connector carefully, you'll see it's cut, got a cut out notch, a rectangular notch. When you put this onto the PCB, which I'm now going to do, when you put that on the PCB, what you have to do is you locate it with that rectangular notch pointing to the edge of the PCB, pointing, in other words, outwards that way, because that ensures that you can orientate the cable correctly when you plug a cable into there, which you will do soon enough. Now that's in position now, but then what you have to do is to turn the board over and support the board properly and then solder every one of those 40 legs in position. Now, like I say, first few that you do, it's a new thing and you'll be a bit, you know, shaky about it. But by the time you've done these, <laughs> uh, just two or three of those, you'll be, a, you'll be an expert. You just need a steady hand, you need clear vision, you need 0.7 millimeter solder and a fine tipped conical soldering iron bit. Solder those into there, that's fine. Not quite finished yet, because there's another one similar to that that has to go in. And this one here is a two times seven dill pin header socket. Much smaller than the other one, as you can see. It's also got a location rectangular slot there, which also has to point that way on the, on the board. So let's put this one into the board, like that, whoops. Sorry, a bit fiddly there. Now they're both on and they both need to be soldered in that position, like that. So you've got these dill PCB sockets to solder and you've got these PCB dill pin headers to solder. When you've done that, you've built the PCB. How about that? Right? You have to do that for three of the PCBs. And at the end of it all, what you will have, like they say on telly, I've got one I prepared earlier. <laughs> there we are. This has got those um, uh, dill sockets soldered in position for the OLEDs and it's got the um, boxed pin headers soldered in position for the plugs that connect, in fact, to the Arduino Due. So that's how you assemble the PCB. Now I'm going to show you now I'm going to show you how, how you the, the thing you have to do to make it work okay now the at, at the heart of the display are these little things which I don't supply as part of the kit right these I don't supply them as part of the kit uh, but you can buy them from me if you like you might have to wait some time whilst I get stocks but um, I'm perfectly happy to supply them to you. These are fully defined in the construction manual as to exactly what kind of OLED you want. That's an OLED.
These are 1.3 inch OLEDs and they're called SH1106 and it's essential that you, can, you buy the kind with seven pins. Some of them have only got four pins. You can't use that in those in this project. You need seven pins. Right. Now what you do is you take the uh, OLED and you take the board and you put the seven pins into the top row of holes in the first connector. Just like that. As easy as that. Now, in actual fact, there's one little snag, which I have to tell you about. Um, these are 1.3 uh, inch, 1.3 inch OLEDs. But the strange thing is that they're a little bit oversized in the up and down dimension there. Just a little bit. So it does explain to you in the manual that I didn't want to make the PCBs any bigger than necessary. And I didn't want to make the, the stock plates any bigger than necessary. So I decided the best thing to do was to file one millimetre off the bottom of the OLED's PCB, which I've done and actually I've done, I've probably done hundreds by now. Um, uh, so it's easy to do. You just need a file and you rub that edge, that edge along the file and uh, you can see where I've slightly filed a little bit off the bottom. You can't do any harm in the filing because there's no connections down there at all that you're likely to get to, right? But what you do have to be very careful all the time with these is breaking the display because there's two sharp corners at the bottom and they're very easy to snap. Now I've handled, in OLED terms altogether, I probably ha I've handled several hundred. And I've broken two. Um, and I broke two in the same place. One of those corners, I just broke it off. Unfortunately, even though those corners are not part of the actual display system, they are part of the wiring into the display. And you'll find the pixels, a lot of the pixels won't work if you break the edge off there. So just handle them carefully. But you will have to solder a little bit off. Now, this should be enough for us to test this part of the board, that bit and that bit. We can test that, those two parts of the board. Now, I'm, just, I'm going to show you, in order to connect this board to the Arduino Due here, we need a cable, right? And because this OLED Due has to connect to two other um, uh, PCBs as well, uh, we'll actually have three cables connecting to the DUA. One from the inner PCB, one from the central, and one from the outer. Now you have to make up those cables. And this one is that I've got here is the central cable, the cable for the central PCB. And you will see it's made of ribbon cable. Yeah, that's the ribbon cable that we use. I've used 40 way throughout uh, for this. That means it's got 40 cores. One of the interesting and odd things about it though is that all the ribbon cable is pitched at 0.05 of an inch, right? So basically two cores of that cable take up 0.1 of an inch. Now, in the case of all of our connectors, right, all of our connectors are in pairs and they're actually 0.1 of an inch apart. So what I'm doing all the way through, I'm using a pair of cores for each connection. And that's because in the cable and in the pin header, header, I can use two pins for each conductor. And so I'm using two cores. That's explained in more detail in the, in the uh, construction booklet. So I, I'll, I'll stop there with that one. Now, this, um, this cable, these, these cables that we use for connecting to the Arduino, They've got two types of connector. The first type of connector is the one which plugs in to the PCB and it's, it's called the, the IDC connector for the ribbon cable. And these are very nifty. You see here, we've actually got 40 connector, connections on here. We're using them in 20 pairs. And I'm just going to illustrate to you how you use these connectors. What you do is if you look at it, you'll see there's the base with the 
with the, the, the sockets two times 20 rows. And then on the other side of that, there's the metal connectors, which are sharp, and they will pierce the insulation and make contact with the cable cores. So what we have to do is to hold the cable the right way round, and there's a plastic notch on it, which matches the, the, the plastic notch on, on the pin header. What we have to do is to feed this into there, like so, until it comes out the other end, which it's now done. You can see that. I've fed it through, it's come out the other end. Now what will happen is, we're gonna put this in the vise. You put that in your vise, and as you tighten those two together, there, suppose, suppose that's the vise, the vise has got to go like that and squeeze those together and the insulation will be displaced and will be pierced and there'll be a connection made to every one of those cores. And uh, there's also a little top that you can put on that, a cap, uh, to secure it further. But you'll see all that in the manual and there's a diagram in the manual for each of the cables that you need. I will just show you. There they are, the diagrams. This is the one for the central and then we've got the inner and the outer, and you will notice that there's, uh, on the other end there's a connector called a pin header, sorry, called a pin strip, <laughs> um, a connector called a pin strip. I'm going to show you that. There's the connector, the pin strip connector, and we solder the pairs of cores onto the connections of the, of the uh, uh, pin strip, and then this will, we can plug this into the Arduino and I'm going to do that now. Each one of these three has to be plugged into the correct point and I'm going to just carefully spend, if you don't mind, I'm just going to spend 30 seconds connecting that to the correct point. Okay, that's where it's going to go and I'm just going to squeeze it into position done. So now our Arduino DOA has got its necessary connections to the central PCB all connected and hunky-dory. Okay, what we've then got to do is we then have to connect this, which I'm doing now, it's now connected to the uh, to the PCB as well. Right. I have to turn that the other way up because I want us to be able to see in a moment, I want us to be able to see the, um, the OLED. Right. Now on the end here is the OLED. You can see that. And I've got um, a USB cable here and uh, my USB cable is not connected uh, into a laptop, it's just connected to a power supply. And I'm going to plug the, um, I'll show you doing this, I'm going to plug my Arduino DUE into, uh, I'm going to plug the power supply into the Arduino DUE. I'm going to do that now, right? A little LED lights on the DUE to show we've got some power. And if we now look at this, at the other end here, you will be able to see that there is a display on the OLED, right? And what it says is, Helpwerk stop labels KA Spencer. Now that is part of a test sequence, which the system goes through every time the power is turned on to the Arduino DUE. And that is normally done when you turn the help work organ on. Okay, now what I'm also, I'm going to show you a bit more because I'm going to plug several more OLEDs in and uh, we're going to then verify that they're all working. I've taken a second OLED here and I'm going to plug that in to the, um, to the second socket on the PCB.
there. Okay. And uh, of course, it's, it's not working yet, that second one, for a very simple reason. The OLEDs have to be sent the data. And at the moment, the second one was put in after all the data had already been sent. So I'm now going now bringing the uh, this OLED into view. There it is. They're now both in view. And I'm going to press the button, and the other one will light up. So watch that. Press the button. There we are. Now we've got messages on both of those two OLEDs that I've plugged in. And if we look at the see what the messages are. The first one is the same as before. The second one says software version 3.31. 21 and a, and a code for the version of the software and that is also part of this of the testing that happens to make sure everything's hunky-dory when you first turn everything on right it's like a boot process if you like uh, such as you're accustomed to with your PC I'm going to plug another one of these into here there Okay, and as you can see, that one's not showing anything at the moment. But when I press that button on the Arduino Duet and the reboot takes place, you'll now see that there is another message on a third OLED, and that message says license in house with a message code with a license code, and that's just uh, part of your um, authorization to use the software and also so you know exactly what version and so on of the software you've got. Right, I'm going to plug one more in. In fact, I'll, I'll plug two more in. Uh, I'm plugging one more in now and because the net, I want to show you the next message because the next message is different from all the other messages that you've seen. So we're now going to reboot the Arduino DOA and you'll see that now all four of the first lot have lit up. Lit up. And that um, message on the fourth one here is very different from the one on all the others. Because first of all, it's got L23 and L24 test OK. Now, this L23 is the, is the stop switch number that is on the right of this particular OLED. And L24 is the stop switch number that's on the left. And this is just proving to you that this OLED is going to display the correct stop label. Because after all, you've got 60 stop level labels and we've got to make sure that all the stop text will be directed to the correct label. And that shows you that that's working. So when Hauptwerk sends the uh, label text through the MIDI connection to the Arduino DUA and the software it sorts it all out we will we would expect the soft the the label for label 23 to come to the top part of that label and the label for and the text for label 24 to be there and i'm just going to connect one more just to show you that we'll get different numbers of the labels on the next one if we do and what i'm going to do i'm not going to plug the next one right next to it in i'm, I'm leaving a gap okay so i've left a gap and I'm now going to press the button on the um, on the Arduino Due, and it's going to light up that other label, and you'll see that light up, and it says there label 27 and label 28, L27, L28. That's what it says, which means that that's the text for label 27 and the text for stop 28. And uh, we know that I know, and you will know when you built it, that that's the correct position for the for those particular uh, number of stops. So that's how you build the um, uh, the each PCB. You solder those connections in, and then you plug the OLEDs in. And I recommend that you do what I've just done. You take your your uh, Arduino Due which is here on the end of all this. There's your Arduino Due covered up by that cable at the moment. You take the Arduino Due, you make up the cable to connect it to the PCB, you plug the labels into the PCB, 
and you connect it either to a computer or to a power supply. You don't need help, Bert, to test this. You um, just plug it into a power supply or into your computer via USB and these will light up and verify that the hardware is functioning. Um, so, uh, I'm going to stop this second part of these, uh, th these talks now um, because the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at assembling components uh, onto the uh, stop plates. Thank you very much for watching and we'll start the, the next uh, part uh, in just a few minutes. Thank you.